Hello and welcome to our next lecture in GIT 250. This time we're talking about finishing and bindery, two important components of the print process. So every sheet that comes off of a press is not finished. It needs to be bound or finished. Now those are two separate kind of categories or designations for things that we do to those press sheets to make them into the finished product. Let's start off talking about bindery. So bindery in its most simple form is just sticking pages together in some way, shape, or form. It involves a lot more though. Bindery department is more than just binding the pages together. It's all the different things that invo are involved in finishing the document. Um, finishing is, I keep using the word interchangeably, but finishing is its own thing. We'll talk about that in a minute. So right now we're just talking about bindery. So bindery is drilling holes. Think of something that's three hole punched. If you have a stack of thousands of sheets, you're not going to use a three hole punch on that. You're going to use a big drill. Perforating. If you ever wonder how things are perforated, where you tear out a coupon out of a magazine or whatever, someone does that in bindery. Scoring. That's simple. Putting the creases in a page so that it folds over nice and neat. And then folding is the next step right after scoring. Cutting. You saw that in the last lesson, especially as it relates to bleed. Cutting is an important process and because of the way that Press sheets are a set size. Your document or design may be all kinds of different sizes and you can't print to the edge of the page. Cutting is an essential part of uh, nearly every single print job. Collating, obviously pages have to be arranged into order. Binding, we'll talk about this on the next slide, but binding is that process of sticking pages together. Trimming is kind of like cutting. Uh, not necessarily cutting things up into their, their finished page sizes, but specialty trimming, which you'll see an example of this uh, where the corners are trimmed on a document in the 360 video of the print lab this week. And then packaging, obviously, both creating packaging out of printed pieces and packaging things to ship them out to a client. So to differentiate bindery from binding, this is the process of putting things together into a document. So the binding family is stitching, gluing, sewing, uh, incorporating into a case, binding with coils and other things. So some of these may be familiar terminology to you. I'm sure you've all seen coil bound, bound documents, whether spiral or wire or plastic comb type coils that go into a document. You've all seen documents, whether you realize it or not, that are perfect bound. Very, very common. Saddle stitch is very common too. Um, but this isn't an exhaustive list. There are other things. So take a minute, pause the video if you need to. Take a look through some of these names and see if you can look those up when you do the reading. All right, so I'm throwing a lot of information at you this week. This is a fairly short lecture, but we're going to cover some important topics and then follow that up with the reading in your assignment. So one thing that you definitely need to be aware of in design, and, and this is something that you started to think about a little bit in your last week project, in week five's project, where you're setting up a document for print, is the concept of a signature. A signature is a group of pages that are printed on both sides, and then that is trimmed, cut, folded, scored, whatever, bound into the finished piece. So the signature is the press sheet that makes up a bunch of pages. <laughs> this will make a little bit more sense on the next page, but take a look at the image here. There's the signature, the page, the leaf. Anyway, moving on. This, this graphic makes more sense to me. If you've ever looked at the spine of a book, from the top or bottom, you've probably seen this, especially if it's an old book or it's been folded open a bunch of times, maybe one that's broken apart, or a lot of magazines do this too. Uh, it's very, very common with magazines. But uh, this is an example of a 64 page document made up of a batch of signatures. So these signatures are eight pages each, and you can see each of those eight pages are cut down from a larger press sheet stacked on top of each other, scored, folded, and then placed next to another eight page signature, placed to another, placed to another, placed to another. There's a front cover and a back cover and then a bunch of glue on one side on the spine that holds it all together. That is not the only kind of signature. There are many other kinds of signature. Imposition is the process of taking those individual pages that you design in InDesign or in your layout software and imposing those onto a page. That would be the verb form of that. When you impose your design onto the press sheet, you would take certain pages. If you look, for example, right here in the middle, let's look at this 12 page imposition. 
and you'll notice that page one and eight are next to each other. Page four and nine are next to each other, but they're upside down. Then five and 12 are back the other direction. It gets a little complicated, but when you think about how things fold so that they're bound, it makes sense. So what I would recommend is grab a piece of newspaper or something and start folding it up and see what kind of signatures you can make. There's a little diagram on the next page that will give you kind of more instructions on how to fold up a, a signature. But uh, if you look at the four page signature over here on the left, that probably is a little bit more um, fresh in your memory from our, our project. You have page one and page two. They are on entirely different sides of the page. Page two and three are right next to each other. So this is the inside of our little booklet. And this is the front cover and the back cover. All right, so if you wanted to fold a 16 page signature, take a look at how this works. So we have this long, and this isn't to scale or anything like that. But uh, if you wanna give this a try, it's interesting as an example to try and make a folding dummy like this. Basically you would fold up the sheets and number those pages and then that gives you a very good visual representation of how to lay out your design. Luckily, this concept is important to understand. However, it's not necessary that you memorize any of this unless you want to work in pre-press, for example, then that's a good thing to know. As a designer, typically you would just send your design, your PDF, um, as long as it's laid out properly in the design and it has proper marks and bleeds and all those kind of things then the pre-press department is gonna handle imposition. You don't need to worry about that kind of stuff quite so much. But let me jump back to this page and ask you guys a question. If you look really closely at these pages right here at the spine, you'll notice that the distance that this travels around right here, can you see my mouse? That distance is a lot greater than the distance right here, this interior page. So there's a lot more distance here than there is here. So when this design is made, if you're designing this from scratch and not using specialized plugins or imposition software to handle it for you, then you need to take into consideration that the width of the paper, the thickness of that paper is gonna increase that distance. And that's gonna end up needing to have more bleed or more extra space in that area to accommodate for the fold. I'm not gonna tell you what that term is, but I'm gonna I hope that you catch that in the in the reading material, or if you don't, be sure and look that up. <laughs> it's gonna be on the quiz. Okay, so bindery as design. This is a concept that you guys have probably seen, though you may not be aware of it. Uh, as you look around, maybe some of you, even in the packaging samples that you guys sent in, in uh, an earlier assignment, the, the use of bindery, special trimming, the type of pages, the way that it's perforated or scored or folded, can be used to add certain elements to the design, complexity to the design, sophistication, or uh, some novelty. Uh, anybody that's ever opened up high-end packaging, like Apple's packaging or um, any product that has, you know, a lot of attention to detail in packaging, you'll notice that bindery is a big part of the packaging experience. When you unbox a new product that you really like, the design on the packaging may be great, but again, think back to Apple, it's just a white box with a logo on it usually. It's the packaging itself that is the experience and that, that it, uh, makes it feel so refined. Okay, here's, here's one simple example of bindery as part of the design. For the uh, 60 years of anniversary of Pantone and 60 years, or not anniversary of Pantone, but 60 years of the Queen, they took her signature uh, suit that she wears and, and you know, this is Photoshop. They, the designer just matched all those or uh, composited that to make it look like there are all these different Pantone colors and then they assigned the Pantone values that, that match that up. And then the bindery portion of this is just a simple die cut, trimming the outline of the queen so that this thing spirals out and opens up into this repeating pattern. It's bindery as designed. Here's an example of something called a stab stitch. This is a, an art book, kind of, in a way. It was a project that um, was intended to showcase a certain design aesthetic of Japanese styles, and that's the Japanese style bindery. That stab stitch bindery is unique to the design of the book. And so talking about these design concepts in the book is reinforced by using that specialized, refined 
bindery concept to produce the book itself. Uh, bindery is really apparent in children's books a lot of times. They're very, you know, children are very hands-on, tactile, and textures in books, uh, bumpiness, holes, cutouts, raised surfaces, pop-ups, things like that are very common in, in young children's books. I have four kids, I know, trust me. Uh, but if you want to go look at Barnes & Noble or somewhere and walk through the children's section, take a look at some of the small children's books and you'll see that it's very, very common for these specialized and sometimes very complex bindery to take place on these books. All right, so um, there are a lot of definitions in this lecture. I'm not going to go through each of these, but I'm going to kind of cherry pick a few of these and let you um, look at the PDF, download the PDF that accompanies this, or pause the video on these on these slides if you want to. But just going through a couple of these, um, let's jump to a simple one. That fourth bullet point down that says cutting. Using a guillotine-like blade to cut large quantities of paper at one time. I put a little animation in last week's lecture so you could see what the cutter looks like in the video, the 360 video of the print lab. You'll see that in effect um, in the print lab and you'll see a demonstration of it trimming through a whole bunch of paper at once. It's a little terrifying to use one of those for the first time when you realize just how sharp it is and how powerful it is, but it really is a safe device um, that's very efficient and can do some cool things. Uh, you'll see drilling, you'll see um, some other things. Cracking. When a book or catalog is open, the adhesive keeping the spine together weakens, producing a cracked effect. Um, you guys have probably seen that effect when you break the spine of a magazine for the first time or something like that. Um, folding or score. So scoring and folding. Scoring, I think, is on a different page, but scoring is basically putting the creases in a sheet. Now, the purpose of that is because when it's folded, sometimes, especially with digital print, the ink on top will crackle. It'll crack up. And the paper, because of the fibers of, of the paper traveling in a certain direction, if it's folded, it'll actually crack the surface of the paper, especially a coated paper. Remember, coated papers have essentially a coating of clay on the surface, and that clay, clay <laughs> is somewhat brittle. And if you just fold it by itself, it can give you kind of a jagged fold or rippled. Uh, if you can get a hold of from your print samples, find something like a business card or card stock or something that's glossy and fold it over and you'll see that the surface of that will crackle up and you'll see the pulpy kind of fibrous paper inside um, and it breaks the surface of that. So scoring it basically applies a whole lot of pressure. Imagine uh, if you if you just do this, grab a nickel or a penny or something and press it firmly on that same stock, that substrate coated paper and press it in hard and drag until you make a line across that paper. You're dragging and scoring the paper with a dull instrument like a coin, um, the edge of the coin, obviously, and then fold it along that line. And you'll see that it folds much better, much more smoothly, and it doesn't crackle. So scoring and folding, two important things that go together. You'll see examples of that in the 360 video as well. Um, Inline, that's not so much a bindery technique, but a way that bindery can happen. So when we talk about inline bindery, for example, a large web press. A web press is typically a gigantic press that runs a tremendous amount of material through very quickly. And it's a continuous roll of paper instead of individual sheets. And so these are giant rolls that are brought in with forklifts. They're, they're pretty large. And the scale of this is immense and it's moving very, very quickly. So for someone to be grabbing sheets or grabbing um, these rolls and moving them off is not effective and it's not quick enough. So web presses typically will have inline bindery, meaning they'll have a slitter. So imagine this roll of paper traveling through a web, through a web press, and a slitter is just a blade, usually a roller kind of blade that's gonna cut that paper as it goes along and trim it into sheets fold it in line so that by the time it reaches the end of that device, that press, it's already collated, it may be bound, it may be um, stapled, it may be whatever else. So when we talk about inline anything, that just means that it doesn't actually leave the automated process of the press. It moves on from the press into bindery without a person jumping in there and moving things around. 
Perfect binding is a very common form of binding as well. Um, these signatures, like we talked about signatures before, they're stacked on top of each other, and then glue is applied to the pages. Pretty simple process. Um, but you're limited with how many pages can go in those signatures, and so they would be bound together, multiple signatures to make multiple pages in a document. Saddle stitching is basically stip, stitch, <laughs> sorry, I can't talk tonight, uh, stapling the spine of the book. Scoring, we talked about that already. All right, I said there's a lot here. I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, we'll stop right here with the terminology. But definitely do watch the 360 videos. There's some important stuff in there that you'll pick up. Um, there will be content on the quiz from those videos. Not this quiz necessarily, but the final exam, which will be kind of a summary of all our quizzes, including topics from those 360 videos. So if you don't see a question on those 360 videos this week or last week, there weren't any specifically, don't bypass that. Don't skip them because on the final exam, there definitely will be questions that relate to those 360 videos from the print imaging lab.